Now we are going to learn how the lac operon works. It works on two principles. That is, so two bases are for learning whether the lac operon is switched on or switched off is one, it is based on whether the repressor is active or inactive. The second basis is based on a another concept which is called as catabolite repression. So first I will explain the concept of repressor protein. So lac I produces a repressor protein, right? It produces a repressor protein. This is always present. Now normally in the uh, in the in, in the inside the E. coli bacteria, the repressor is always produced and this repressor will form into a tetramer state. So, four subunits join to form a tetramer and this tetrameric state it will go and bind to the, so what is shown here is this tetramer uh, repressor go and bind to which site? Operator site. Now, when this tetramer is bound to the operator site, even though this is an enzyme that I am showing here is the RNA polymerase. This is RNA polymerase. So, normally in the body of E. coli bacteria or inside the cell of E. coli, the repressor protein is active. So, this is called as active repressor. So, you can see this is the active repressor. So, when the repressor is active in the tetramer state, it is going and bind to the operator site and this enzyme called as RNA polymerase cannot move forward which means this gene is not expressed. It is not expressed that is a normal thing that is happening always in E. coli bacteria because in E. coli bacteria glucose is there then it is it is not needing the lac operon or the structural genes are inducible genes it is induced only when the uh, cell is lacking or the E. coli bacteria has no glucose then only this induction will happen. So, this is the basic uh, concept of repressor protein that is why I told you this I is a constitutive. So, repressor is active always uh, not active always it is present always but whether it is active or inactive makes a difference. So, normally when the E. coli bacteria is having glucose lac operon is not needed. So, this is what is happening there. The repressor is in a tetramer state. It binds to the operator and the RNA polymerase is not moving ahead. There is one more principle that you or one more concept that you should understand to find out or to learn the lac operon. This is called as catabolite repression. What is catabolite repression? Catabolite repression is is explained by a protein that protein is called as cap or CRP. This cap or CRP is catabolite activator protein, catabolite activator protein or this is also CRP that is catabolite repressor protein. So, two names are there cap or CRP actually it's a, the name will confuse you whether it is activating or CRP actually what happened is this cap is a positive regulator. It's a very very important question. The cap, cap is a positive regulator, positive regulator of lac operon which means what if cap is active so if cap is active then lac operon is switched on lac operon is switched on lac operon is switched on that is what i've given as the plus symbol so if cap is active lac operon is switched on how the cap can be active so the cap is active in one state how so, this is a cap, this is called as the catabolite activator protein. This cap in this state is an inactive state, it is inactive, but it becomes active. How? 
it becomes active the catabolite activator protein will it is active when it is bound to cyclic amp so this inactive cap is converted to active cap how so this is converted to active cap when it is bound to a pro it is bound to a compound which is called as cyclic amp so this is cyclic amp so when it is bound to so you can see a cyclic amp is bound to it then so when a cyclic amp comes this is cyclic amp when a cyclic amp is bound to the cap then you can see that this is active okay now when this cap is active then it will increases the expression of the structural genes of the lacoperon that is lacoperon is switched on okay now just think how can we learn this rather than by hearting this how can you very simply learn this that is i have told you that uh, which is the preferred fuel for uh, uh, e coli bacteria the preferred fuel is glucose and lactose is not a preferred fuel right now we think about our body in our body when the body is in the fat state in the fat state which is the hormone insulin is the hormone and you know that in the fat state the blood glucose level is very high so when the blood glucose level is high insulin is present in our body and in the presence of insulin cyclic amp level is low or high we have learned that cyclic amp in the presence of insulin uh yeah, the cyclic amp level is low because cyclic amp activate an enzyme called as phosphodiesterase and hence the cyclic amp level will be low so we have we are going to apply this concept to the lac uh, e coli bacteria that what i have told you is in the well fed state insulin cyclic amp level is low so well fed means glucose is present so just apply this to the e coli bacteria in the e coli bacteria when there is enough glucose don't consider that insulin there because that will confuse you ask me whether insulin is present in e coli or not but i have compared it to human body because that will be easy for you to understand so when there is glucose cyclic amp level under the influence of insulin cyclic amp level will be low okay now apply this to e coli bacteria when there is glucose cyclic amp just cut that insulin level from there cyclic amp level will be low right so when the cyclic amp level is low now you see this when the cyclic amp level is low you can see cap is not bound to cyclic amp means cap is inactive so i've told you when there is glucose in uh, e coli bacteria it should use glucose it is not needing lacoperon which means when there is glucose the presence of glucose that is why it is called as a catabolite repression the presence of glucose is repressing what the lacoperon hope you get my point so when there is glucose cyclic amp level is low in the low level of cyclic amp cap is inactive cap is inactive so uh, what is cap it's a positive regulator of lacoperon so that is lacoperon is a positive regulator but inactive cap is not a positive regulator means the lacoperon is switched on sorry switched off because the the e coli is having enough glucose it is not having uh, or it does not have to metabolize the lactose right now we think about the next situation that's why it is called as catabolite repression that is presence of glucose is repressing the use of lactose that is why it is called as catabolite repression now one more thing is when there is no glucose then the e coli has to depend on lactose now you apply this concept to our body when there is no glucose what is our hormone glucagon is our hormone glucagon increases the cyclic amp level that i have explained in the first general topic like it increases the level of cyclic amp now in the presence of cyclic amp what is the state of this cap the cap is active okay so when there is no glucose the only source of fuel now we are applying this to e coli bacteria just cut that glucagon from there when there is no gluco glucose means cyclic amp level is high cyclic amp level is high means cap is active if cap is active it means what lacoperon is uh, so it is positively regulating the lacoperon means the cap 
lacopron is switched on this is the concept of catabolite repression it's a very important thing this is the basis of understanding the lacopron so i have told you two different things one i have told you is the concept of repressor that means in the presence of uh, that is normally always the repressor protein is active so normally lacopron is switched off next what i have told you is about the catabolite repression 